As we laid in bed, I twirled my fingers in his curly chest hair, tracing circles. So you don't think I need to wax it? I was thinking of waxing it, he said. No, don't, I said. It's perfect. I was transported to when I was a kid, and my mom had a copy of Cosmopolitan, which had Burt Reynolds as the centerfold. <laughs> His jungle of body hair was like a painting. He seemed to be the ideal man to have as a lover, and what every man wanted in himself. This was the issue of Cosmo that spawned Playgirl. It was a naughty possession for a genteel southern woman such as my mom, but she had it because she loved Burt Reynolds, loved the hair on his head, and had heard about his luscious hair everywhere else. <laughs> hair was very important to her. Burt Reynolds' hair, her daughter's hair, and her own hair. My mom had long, honey blonde hair as a child. She loved to wear it in braided pigtails. She still has one of those braids, kept in a glass display case in her room. What she hated was the way her mother, my grandma Rosie, brushed her hair at the kitchen table before braiding it. She would do it so roughly that my mom would cry, occasionally yelping out in pain from having her hair pulled. Grandma Rosie would chastise her in frustration. Stop crying. I cried when I had my hair lightened, bleached, for the first and only time. I sat with my head back in the sink and had never felt such burning. It was necessary, the stylist Ronnie told me, in order for this to work. When the whole process was over, my hair looked good. It wasn't at all what I'd originally wanted. But most importantly, it was an even color all over. I thought, is this what I'll have to go through in life to look pretty? I felt even worse about it when, over the next couple of days, my scalp developed large, hideous, painful scabs. It was necessary in order for this to work. If only I hadn't been so stupid and had just appreciated the hair I had, like my mom said. I was 22 and living in New York City. I felt like my hair was finally my own. As a child, I'd had the princess dye coif that wasn't my choice, or the, the Olivia Newton-John curls. My sister had the same. We just always had whatever hairstyle our mom had. My mom, <laughs> my mom had allowed us each to get highlights when we turned 15 as a special birthday treat, but they could only be a couple shades lighter than our natural color. In college, one state away from home, I'd ventured into getting my hair professionally dyed, experimenting with different shades, but still safely within the natural spectrum. Lighter blonde, brunette, red. But finally, alone and far away in New York, no weekend visits from the parents. I was making my own money. I felt like I could really dye my hair. Manic Panic hair dye was in all of the stores. Girls in the subway had blue, purple, green hair, talked about what shades they used, and I loved it. I had seen milk toast home dye jobs before, like the predictable black hair on goth girls in high school, or the henna rinsed highlights on hippie girls in college. But this New York rainbow was electrifying. It represented freedom, and I wanted in on it. My job at a straight-laced publishing company kept me from taking the plunge with my hair. But once I planned to leave New York, I bought some Manic Panic. I was going to return home to South Carolina, a gorgeous shade of royal blue. Here's the problem. When you're new to the whole home hair coloring thing, you need to do some research. I had a shade of red hair at the time, and because the Manic Panic dye was a very dark blue, I assumed it would cover up my red hair. You just use it, right? No. What I wish I'd known was that you have to bleach your hair to give yourself an ultra-light, level playing field to work with then that hair will absorb the dark gemstone color as you see it on the package. 
if you don't lighten your red with blonde roots hair first, what you end up with is something that resembles the fur of a calico cat that's been playing with an uncapped magic marker. I came home to live with my parents again, and my mom insisted I get it fixed and back to blonde immediately. She needed me to get it taken care of because it would be best for her. <laughs> my mom used to carry one of her braids with her to whatever hair salon she was visiting to try to recreate her childhood honey blonde color. On one of these trips, somehow she lost the braid between the car and the salon. She scoured the parking lot and couldn't find it, turned her car and her purse inside out, looked all over the floor of the salon, everywhere, in a panic, and never could find the braid. The other one sits alone in its glass case, and she beats herself up over losing its mate. Before we began the long bleaching, coloring, and toning process that would be necessary in order for color correction, Ronnie yelled out to no one in particular, Hey y'all, come over, you have got to look at this. It wasn't even like I was a subject in a teaching hospital. I was just a subject for ridicule. The other stylists and even other clients came over, marveled, giggled, touched my hair, asking, what did you do? And laughed even harder when they heard my story. As I sat with my head leaning back in the sink, my scalp was getting scorched from the chemicals. It was necessary in order for this to work. I tried to find humor in the story too, but I couldn't yet. I wasn't allowed to scratch my scalp, and Ronnie told me that if I kept crying, my flood of tears would rinse out the solution around my hairline and screw up the toning process. So he told me, stop crying. I thought of my great grandmother, Rosie's mother, who was one of the first women to vote in Savannah, Georgia. As a statement of her feminist leanings, she chopped off her long hair to an ear length bob. She was one of the first to do so in the city in the early 20s, and she kept it short for the rest of her life. It was easier that way, she said. It saved her an awful lot of trouble. When my mom had her hair brushed, her tangles pulled, Grandma Rosie would threaten her. If you don't stop that crying, I'm gonna get the scissors and cut it all off. Instead of changing the way she brushed my mom's hair, she just carried on because it was easiest for her. My mom loved her long hair, loved her braids, and tried not to cry. But one day, Grandma Rosie's roughness got to her so badly she screamed as her head was yanked back with the tangle that the brush was caught up in. Grandma Rosie hurriedly finished the braids, tied them off, and walked away from the table. My mom, sniffling, scooted her chair away. Sit, Rosie said, and of course my mom sat. She continued to cry and then broke out into a wail as she felt scissors crunching near her scalp. She begged her mom to stop, but didn't dare move. Hush, Rosie said. I told you I'd do it, didn't I? My mom's hair wasn't hers, and my hair wasn't mine. Our hair belonged to our mothers. These days, my sister obsesses over her one-year-old son's hair. He doesn't have as much as most kids his age. He has the slightest of wisps of hair, that you have to really feel around for and then excitedly reassure my sister that, oh yes, he does have luscious hair you can run your fingers through. <laughs> my sister and my parents, my sister and my parents live in the same neighborhood across the country from me. And when I call to see how my nephew is doing, I get the report from my sister. His hair blew in the wind today. You can see it lift up from his head. My nephew's hair isn't his. It belongs to his mother. Burt Reynolds' hair wasn't his. It belonged to the world. <laughs> what about my beard, he said, as my fingers walked across his body. I was thinking of getting rid of that too. 
I rubbed his face, his scraggly whiskers too precious to me. If you do that, I'll kill you. <laughs> Jennifer Corley, everybody.